My name is James Bridle and I'm an artist and a writer uh, and I work primarily in and around technology. So I'm fascinated by the ways in which uh, the internet and everything that's come with it from kind of computer code to artificial intelligence changes the way we think about the world uh, and how actually quite often the thing that changes the world is, is not the technology itself but how we understand that technology. Who's capable of using it? Who's it for? Who really understands what's going on? And, and, and who is capable of taking that technology and doing something interesting with it. So the Digital Commission for the Serpentine is a project called the Cloud Index, which is a political weather forecast. It uses artificial intelligence to analyse uh, the weather over the last seven, eight years in the UK and compares that to polling data around the EU referendum, which seemed to me to be a democratic contest which nobody came out of happy and says there's a correlation here between the weather, the climate, uh, and how we feel and how we vote. And, and if there's that correlation exists, uh, then should we be thinking about how we change it? Uh, if, if all other avenues of uh, political functioning seem to be struggling, if people are apathetic, uh, if they don't understand, if they feel they have no agency in their lives, uh, and if no one seems to be happy by the kind of outcomes we're predicting, maybe we need to start understanding a little bit more about um, how our communications and our science and our media are functioning in the world to change that. We did seem to kind of lose ourselves in a, uh, a kind of orgy of over, over narration with almost no grounding in, in the facts on the ground. That seemed to me to be an incredibly important point to start talking about um, how we are acting in this deeply kind of headless fashion. That this, we're being sprayed with all this information, most of it uh, with no grounding in truth at all, and we have lost our ability to, to determine which of it is, is you know, is truthful, but also crucially, which of it is useful, which of it is actually something we can act upon. Two decisive factors seem to me to be a part of that, one of which is this lack of belief in the political system, essentially. There was huge amounts of discussion even before the referendum was out that if the referendum didn't come out the way one expected it to or one wanted to, then it must have been rigged. And the second part of it is this lack of literacy, this inability to distinguish between uh, what stories are true and what are not, which stories are useful and which are not. What the, what the index does is it takes uh, a huge archive of over 15,000 satellite images of the UK over the last seven, eight years uh, and analyzes them and it looks at them and this, this machine intelligence works by essentially simulating the, the structure of a brain. It's a thing called a neural network, which is a, a system of nodes which feeds images into it. And over time, these nodes arrange themselves into such a fashion that they can perceive certain uh, aspects of the image. A neural network that's looking for faces, for example, part of the network might start to be able to recognize or to, to associate the position of an eye with where it should be in a face. And so over time, that network has seen so many faces and has arranged itself in such a way that when asked to do so, it can produce new images of faces. And then you can start to do quite interesting things with that as well, because you can do a kind of arithmetic with that knowledge. So you can say, well, here's 15,000 pictures of uh, a smiling man, and here's 15,000 pictures of an unsmiling woman. Now make me a smiling woman. And it will create new faces with different features available to you, because it has learned how to associate visual information with data. The Cloud Index does a similar process with satellite imagery. So it's looked at this huge archive of satellite images of the UK, and it's looked at the shape of the clouds, and it says, ah, oh, I associate this set of clouds with uh, this kind of feeling in the country. Uh, when the clouds are massed in this way, when they're flowing in this way, when they're dispersed in this way, uh, the voting intentions of the country seem to be shifting in this direction. And so it's possible to say to this network, once it's built this, OK, show me what the clouds would look like for this particular outcome. Uh, if we wanted, in fact, to start nudging the vote in this way, then what should the clouds look like in order to produce such an outcome? And so the Cloud Index produces a mass of new views of the UK, new cloud patterns for the sky, uh, new ways of arranging the atmosphere in order to change how we might approach these kind of democratic questions. But I was so fascinated with this connection between uh, the development of, of, of computation uh, as a system first of understanding and then of control and the parallel uh, process that goes from this desire to forecast the weather to the desire to control it. So there's huge numbers of reasons why you would, why you would wish to control the weather, uh, whether it's kind of protecting crops from hail or whether it's sending the rains down onto your enemy, uh, which was you know, done large scale in Vietnam, for example, uh, using uh, silver iodide uh, to see seed the clouds to increase the rainfall. I wanted to make something that actually is deliberately more kind of confusing and playful 
than other work which has been a lot more explicit, a lot more obviously and directly political. A lot of my work often gets called activist work because it deals with political systems, with legal regimes. I don't tend to think of it that way. I just find those to be interesting things to study and represent. The activism aspect of that is really up to whoever kind of wants to take, to take this forward.